This is Coogan Cassius for iFilm London. All the way from Atlantic City, we have Eddie Hearn on the phone. Hello, Eddie. Hello, old boy. How are you? I'm very well. I'm just, I'm just moving away from the music. Um, it's quite lively out here. You wouldn't know because we didn't bring you. Even though I've had so much stick, but, you know, it seems like I've committed a criminal offence. Uh, by not bringing you out to this event, Coogan. You know, I feel quite bad now. If I knew it would have had this reaction, I would have brought you. Well, listen, we've still got a trip to Canada coming, so uh, we'll talk about that nearer the time. Um, you've, That's right. You've been there all week, obviously, so uh, what's the vibe been like about this fight out there? Um, it's not a huge fight out here. You know, it's an Australian against the Brit. I think people have embraced the fact that it's a 50-50 fight. Um, it might sound weird for people to understand, but we really feel like we're the home fighter out here. Yeah. And I don't know that, whether that's because Darren's fought out here before or it's, we're just so confident, but, you know, we're in New York and I think last time we hit the Sergio Martinez fight, it was all it was a bit of a novelty, you know, it was like, wow, well, we're in New York and, oh, we're going down to the Ball Ball Hall, the house that Gatti built and, oh, and now it's like, Darren just wants to get in there and fight. You know, and he's not sort of looking around the place like, wow, this is amazing. It's just another fight for him. And I think, for Gil, this is the first time he's boxing in the US. Um, and he's got a lot to, to prove. And he's got a lot to show to HBO. Darren's just in a wonderful place. Um, both fighters, obviously, have had a great camp. And you know, Darren's weight has been absolutely phenomenal. He's, he's followed a brilliant, brilliant pan from his nutritionist. And he just, he just seems ready. I, I just... I really think he's going to do the business. Uh, some interesting comments on that brilliant program that Sky put together, uh, the Darren Barker ringside special. Interesting that Darren said that before the Martinez fight, you know, he didn't really, he wasn't sure why he, you know, why he was there, whether he was doing it just for the money or it, 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 he was in a, a sort of a strange place uh, or a strange uh, time of his life. So this is this sounds like this is a very different Darren Barker going to the ring against uh, Daniel Gill tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a few reasons we took the Sergio Martinez fight. One, because it was a chance to fight for a world title against the very best in the division. Um, two, um, it was a huge amount of money involved. And three, with Darren Barker's injuries, we didn't really know what his future was, and nor did he. So when an opportunity like that comes up, you've got to grab it with both hands. We all felt that he had a great chance to beat Martinez, but when you really look back at it, you know... <laughs> With the experience he's had, he, he never really showed that he was in the same level as Martinez. And then all of a sudden he fights Martinez after six or seven rounds. You know, he's, he's banging the fight and eventually he gets beat, whether that's quality, whether that's experience, whatever it is. But it makes you realise that you can compete with the top level fighters. And of course, Martinez two years ago was a different animal to the Martinez of today. Um, and he always know Martinez. So... You know, and Darren has improved a lot. He's improved his, his power, he's improved his confidence. I think he's much more aggressive than he used to be. But if you can hold the centre of the ring and not be outworked by Gil and meet him in the middle, I, I really think he's going to stop him. Um, but, you know, your point about that programme is, is that when a fight comes up like that, you know, Darren fought Sparda and then got injured. And, you know, he was injured before the Sparda fight and after the Sparda fight. I mean, you know, this is the first run he's had of... You know, this will be his third fight with no injuries, and it, it you know, that means a lot in terms of momentum and confidence. And um, you know, he's, he's in great spirits and mentally, physically, in a great place. And you know, the, the support he's had from people back home. Now, I said on Twitter yesterday, I can't tell you how much you know this means to him. It does because he's been bowled over. You know, amount of times he said to me, "I can't believe the support I'm getting from back home." And it does spur you on, it does make a difference. And this sport is all about, or sport in general is all about nicking an extra percent, whether it's mental, physical, you know, things like the support that he's getting from back home lifts him every day. Are we in a sort of um, the pre Frotch Bute position with Darren, where if he doesn't come home with that title, that he would consider retiring? I know, I know you don't want to look at that. I know you don't want to look at that, but is yeah, that... Yeah, listen, Darren, Darren's very hard on himself as an individual. He wants to be the best. And if he can't win world titles, I don't think he really wants to be in the sport. Um, 
he's wanted to turn it in before because physically he was getting all, all bad, you know, bad knocks and bad luck. And, uh, but now he's, you know, his body is responding and he's found a way to train where he can get fit and, you know, prepare meticulously and not get injured. I don't know, you know, I mean, there's big fights out there, Murray, uh, Macklin, with or without a belt. But right now, it's all about Daniel Gill. And, and, you know, the consequences will come after win or lose. Um, you know, my gut feeling is Darren Barker will never get a better chance to win a world title than tomorrow night. So, you know, if you look at it with that mentality, if he wasn't to win, then, you know, you have to ask yourself what you want out of the sport, whether you want a pound note or whether you want to try and build up to another world title shot. But the focus is all on Darren winning the world title, and I really believe he's going to do it. Can I give you a word of advice? Oh, go on, Coo. That means a lot, sitting over in uh, Essex there. Go on, yeah. I'll, I'll tell this. You don't know I'm in Essex. You don't know where I am. I know where you are, but you don't know where I am. Um, if Darren, tomorrow, uh, sort of, you know, stops or is on the verge of stopping Daniel Gill, uh, make sure the referee counts him out before you do your silly run into the fucking ring. That's all I'm going to tell you. That's all I'm going to say to you, because... I'm just it's saying, just well in you, case, you, listen. It's not very well you, dining up on the phone, piping up from the other side of the Atlantic, giving it a big one. Do you know what I mean? What, what <laughs> no, I'm just it? saying. What time is it here? It's half nine, so it's 2.30 in the morning. Have you been out? Have you had a few I've, beers? I've, no. I've, a little bit confident. No, listen, I've, you know. I've been out. I haven't been drinking tonight. But, um, Have you been? You've you started it in the booze again, Coog, haven't you? Not really. Ed, but just you know, where a little bit, a little bit, yeah. The boxing season's really yeah. sort of when it come to an end. My life sort of come to uh-huh. an end, so um, uh-huh. you know. But um, just a couple of um, other things as well. Uh, obviously, Scott Quigg is announced, obviously for his fight with Salinas on the Hay Fury undercard. So yeah. p- potentially another world champion now uh, at the end of yeah. September. Really pleased to make that fight. Tough fight. Very tough fight. But obviously, he's going to have 20,000 British cheering him on. So, um, you know, bottom line is, you're not going to get a better opportunity to win a world title. Home soil, um, I think he's going to do it. Just be prepared for some people, when he wins that world title, to say it's not uh, it's not a world title. Of course, they're going to say that. Listen, Rigondeau's been, been um, promoted to super champion. It's not our business what the WBA do. All I know is he's fighting for the WBA Super Bantamweight Championship of the world. So people can think what they want, but it's not up to us to decide the politics of boxing. He's fighting for the world title. Okay. What was you doing with Amir Khan the other day? We just had a chat. About, um, yeah, what about? You know, talk about, his, talk about his brother. Um, you know, I've talked to Golden Boy about working with Amir and, and Golden Boy at pay-per-view fights with Kel Brook and even Kel Brook against uh, uh, Broner. And things like that. Um, so nothing so, really. So you didn't, you didn't, you didn't, the... you didn't meet him for a, a possibility of him coming and fighting under the Sky Banner with something to do with you. No, nothing to do with that. I think I think he'd like to be part of the Sky Banner again. Uh, you know, judging by the conversations we had. But you know, obviously he's got a deal in place with Golden Boy, and we're happy to deal with him. The conversation was quite a bit about Harun Khan as well, possibly getting him on the. Um, October Bill in Sheffield um, and when we finished the meeting he asked for a picture and next thing I knew it was on Twitter but you know listen we've, we've buried our hatchet with Amir and his team we get on well and uh, that's good for British boxing because you know we can work together and, and make big fights with Amir and Golden Boy and, and so forth ok so obviously Kel Brooks tickets are now on sale I believe is that right? they are against Sinchenko I've got to say they're going brilliantly they're going faster than they did against Matthew Hatton which we had 10,000 in. We'll sell the arena out for this fight. Um, really pleased with the response. And, you know, it shows you Kel Brook's a huge name. And he's had a little bit of a rough time, but he's back, and this is going to be a great fight. And, um, you know, hopefully Khan can get that fight against Alexander, win, and then Kel will be the mandatory, and we can do a huge fight next spring. I know that's, um, that's a fight that makes your balls tingle, because you've, you've told me that before, Khan against Brook. Um, yeah, so Carl, and, Carl and Brooks are one. They're domestically, aside from High and Fury, which is obviously happening. That's the one. That's the one that makes your balls tingle, isn't it, Coop? 
Well, I, I don't know if I'm going to go that far by commenting on that, but it, no? oh. it does excite me. It does excite me. I'm well, not, not going to lie. Uh, yeah. um, what else have you done in there? <laughs> what else have you done in Atlantic City? Can I just guess? You've probably been giving it a big and out there, fucking taking people out to dinner, showing them, oh yeah, this is how we fucking roll with Matchroom. Is that what you've been doing? <laughs> well, we've got a lot of boys out here. You know, we've got Luke Campbell, we've got Kevin Mitchell, we've got Martin Wall, we've got Lee Purdy. So actually, surprisingly enough, I've been training with them every day, running up the boardwalk. My feet are in tatters. But I'm actually having dinner at the moment with HBO. Um, you pulled me away from the table. I, I had to lie. I told them I had a very important phone interview I had to do. Um, you know, obviously, I didn't want to tell them that I was just talking to you. Um, but I uh, was in New York for a couple of days, then come down, and, you know, it's, it's been great. We're in the Revel Hotel. You'd be sick as a dog, because this Revel Hotel is the absolute nuts. It's no baddies, let me tell you. Um, so, yeah, I had a great week, and... You know, I'm quite, quite nervous now because, you know, everyone's put a lot of pressure on themselves here to win this fight. And you know, I said to Darren after the way, nothing, you couldn't have done anything to be in a better position right now to go and win this world title. Now you've got to go and do it. Where, you know, where, and, uh, Ed, where's the, where's the way in? Like, where can we see the way in? No, I oh, know that you All right, not. well, no, I feel London won't here. Sky Sports News are going to show it. I think they've showed some tonight, and they're going to show it again tomorrow. But, you know, obviously it's not our show. So Gary Shaw has got his own stuff that he may put out that today, but, mm. you know. No, that weren't a thing. I just generally, I was looking for it earlier, and I thought you would, if it was out somewhere, you probably would have tweeted it out. So, um, <laughs> yeah, the, um... But, oh, but it's great, great, great fight tomorrow. Obviously, great. You know, you got the uh, Kovalev show as well, and cleverly fight. And I've got to tell you, out here, they don't think Kovalev can lose in a million years. Really? I mean, they're not even talking about cleverly. Honestly, it's really? unbelievable. I think cleverly will beat him on point. But yeah. out here, HBO, the media, they think. I mean, they're not even mentioning cleverly's name. It's all about Kovalev. They don't see how he can lose. So. Unless he's a total hype job, maybe he's very, very good. Do, I don't know. Uh, Ed, Eddie, sorry, just, just to just to ask you about some comments that um I don't know if you read Tony Bellew's Twitter this week, making some comments about Kovalev and then I think Frank Warren responded to uh to his comments. Did you see all that or have you not taken any interest? Bits and pieces, bits and pieces. Okay, but I suppose everyone's entitled to their own opinion, I suppose it's not really well, yeah. Kovalev's never beaten anyone of any serious note. They don't know how good he is. What you will do is you'll find out tomorrow night because Clever, Cleverly is a good fighter and Kovalev is unproven. So if Cleverly beats him, the problem is, is if Cleverly beats him easily, everyone's going to say Kovalev's a hype job. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, look, you know. It is what it Cleverly is. must be getting a huge payday for, for the fight because obviously Kovalev's a huge fighter on HBO. Um, they, they must have an, an option um, on Kovalev if Kovalev was to win because he's a voluntary defence so mm. I don't know maybe it's a good move I don't know but like I say out here no one's mentioned Cleverly's name it's mm. all Kovalev 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 yeah, I think I'm going to go with you on that one. A points win for Cleverly seems the most yeah, I think so. sensible thing. Um, just finally, also you've announced a show on the 21st of September uh, in association with Dave Caldwell, Curtis Woodhouse and Derry Matthews. So, and there's also Rocky Fielding against Tony Dodson, so that's going to be a, a very decent show. And Liam Smith against Eric Oche. Oh, of course, yeah. So you, it's going to be weird because you've got Ryder fighting Billy Joe on Box Nation and you've yeah. got... Call, Dave Caldwell's got obviously Barnes fighting Frankie Gavin. So are you going to have a little? Yeah, no, are you going to have a little box nation screen there, at ringside? What are you going to do? Well, no, my old man's going to the, the Saunders fight. Yeah. Saunders rider, so we'll be keeping in touch and uh, busy night for matching fighters, you know, fighting all over the country. So I'm looking to Matthews against um, Woodhouse. That's had a lot of links. You know, everyone's really interested in that fight. I think Smith against Ocheng will be a brilliant fight. Um, yeah, so. And of course, we've got Richard Burns against Raymond Beltre on September 7th. You're coming up for that one. I've well. just brought. We're talking about that fight a lot over here. A yeah. lot. They think that's going to be a brilliant fight. Yeah, because Pacquiao and that have piped up about it, and they saying that yeah, Beltre's going to win that. So, I've just booked my flights on EasyJet actually the other day. Good man. 
I've just booked them. They were, uh... Google and Cassius back in the saddle. Yeah, this is honestly it's bollocks without that boxing. I do, I, I really do wish I was out there, but listen, it's one of them I things. Know, I know. It's one in of hindsight, I probably should have bought you, but it is, it is lumpy out here. The flights were lumpy, the hotel's lumpy, me and you are both lumpy. That's another story. What are you going to do now then? What, what's your plan? I'm going back to the table now. I'm, this is what I said. Uh, I'm at dinner with HBO, and it's quite rude because the lobster pile has just turned up, and I've done a runner. Do you know what a prat you sound talking about lobster paella? <laughs> and you've name dropped HBO four times in the last five minutes. <laughs> on average, hey, oh, uh, just finally, how on average I've been on the phone. Why don't you have your strawberry Nesquik in that I don't drink strawberry strawberry Nesquik. Don't know what you're talking about. Oh, sorry, right, when is the Frotch, Frotch and Groves press conference? This is what people have been asking me. I don't know what to say. It'll be at the end of August. We're nearly there. All right. Any other news? Anything? Right. Anything else you want to tell us? Uh, Tell us saying, we don't know. Not really, October 5th show, looking for a big fight for Mitchell, he's out here at the moment, Joshua's looking great. Lee Selby against Ryan Walsh, Larry Ekendale against Glenn Foot, Tony Conquest against Waddy Camacho. Great build, that one. Really looking forward to it. British boxing's buzzing, and so is my lobster piler. Alright, well listen, you go and choke on your lobster piler. Uh, can, you, can you get Barker on the phone tomorrow? Yeah, I, I will do. Just send me a text or something, and I'll ri I'll ring him and just have all a quick right. chat with him, if that's all right. All right, Cookie Bear. All right, thank you, Eddie Hunt. Miss, miss, miss you, baby. Yeah, you too, Mug. See you later yeah, on. Done.